There's the engagement, there's the betrothal, and there's the presentation stage. Let's walk through this because it's actually it's really cool because this applies not only to, to Jewish weddings, it'll help us to understand some of the things that we read in our Bibles, but it also it applies to us. We are the bride of Christ. All right, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew. Father, how much we love you, how much we praise you. Lord, I pray as we open our Bibles, Lord, we'd hear your voice. Lord, you have great things for us today, Lord. And Lord, for the future, Lord, someday we get to run into your arms. Someday, Lord, we're finally home. But today, Lord, you're Emmanuel, God with us right here, right now. So bless this time as we look to you. We love you, Jesus. We really do. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. All right. So we started a few weeks ago, the gospel of Matthew. And just to jump right in here, as we started this, Matthew started because, again, remember his background, right? You've been watching The Chosen a little bit, all right? Tax collector, not liked by the Jewish people. And when he gets, when he follows Messiah, follows Jesus, uh, that's the first people he wants to reach. So he starts off his story about the Messiah about all the prophecies that are fulfilled in Jesus, he started off with the genealogy. In that genealogy, you see, this ha- it had to happen this way. He had to be from Abraham and David. He had to be from this line. And just as a reminder now, uh, he, but he cannot be from this genealogy of Joseph. If you remember why? Verse 11, there was what? There was a problem with it. There was a curse that was here from the, from the book of Jeremiah. I showed you all this last time. You can go online and watch it and with the PowerPoints and all that. Um, and then we notice this part of it that it said in verse 16, and Jacob at the end of this genealogy, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom, singular, was born Jesus, who is called Christ. We talked about a little bit about the virgin birth. We're going to see it again in our section today. Verse 23, behold, a virgin shall uh, be with child. A virgin shall be with child and bear a son. And you should call his name Emmanuel. Translated, God is with us from Isaiah 7, he quotes. And so, um, so some of the things we've already seen, you can see what he's doing right up front. He's saying, he's saying the, the Messiah has come. His name is Jesus, born of a virgin, and he fits the description. So far, so good as we go through this. Now we get to uh, verse 18 is where we left off. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Oh, we'll have to stop there in just a minute. Betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to, to make her a public example was minded to put her away secretly. Now, before we get into this story right here, you got to do this. You just got, it is what it is. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Do, 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 do. I don't know the words, don't know the words. What, what movie is that from? That is one of the greatest movies in the history of the moviehood. If you have not seen Fiddler on the Roof, go, I'm sure it's got to be free on Netflix or one of those. Go watch it. It is a classic, classic uh, storyline. And you'll understand some of the things we're going to talk about uh, a little bit today because I cannot just bounce over this. They were betrothed. What is that? What is this betrothal? So let's do a little rabbit trail. Let's take a little moment and let's talk about being betrothed. We don't do that today in our culture. We do it today, but not in our American culture. I think we should get back to this. It's a little late now. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll get to that. But um, But as you're as we're looking at this, there's the engagement. Are you guys ready for this? This is kind of heavy right up front. I didn't tell you any jokes or anything. Usually I get you all warmed up. But you're the first service. You guys are with it. And uh, okay, that's right, Pastor. Don't you forget it. All right, so there's the engagement, there's the betrothal, and there's the presentation stage. Let's walk through this because it's actually it's really cool because this applies not only to, to Jewish weddings, It'll help us to understand some of the things that we read in our Bibles, but it also it applies to us. We are the bride of Christ. We are betrothed to Jesus right now. All of these, all of this little, these things I'm going to talk about applies to us as His church, which is very, very cool. 
Well, the matchmaker. Now, the thing about matchmaking, let's talk about that first of all. Because matchmaking was something where you start with this betrothal. That's the second stage. But the first one is the matchmaking. And this is something that's still done in a lot of cultures across the world. You know, there is, um, we were in China back several years ago. And we're in a park and there was a bunch of people meeting. They were, they were, um, there was all kinds of little groups meeting there and they're all older, always retired. And there was a group that was meeting there. And I said, what is that group with little kids? It says, well, that's the group where they're matching up the kids for, for matchmaking. And I go, that's cool. That was a long time ago. My kids were small and I came back. I said, I told my kids, I said, we should do this to my wife. We should do this. I should be a matchmaker for my kids. Well, my kids did pretty well. They didn't, they didn't uh, take my advice. And, and, um, but they, they married very well, praise God. Just like my wife married really well. Okay. okay so. But this matchmaker. Now, the thing was this, in Bible times, if you watch Fiddler on the Roof, you'll catch this, is that uh, in Bible times, uh, they, were, they were matched up. Many times they uh, really didn't even, maybe they knew each other, but really didn't meet officially until that moment of uh, the betrothal came into play. That we'll talk about it in just a minute. But this matchmaking, you know, when the kids are little, it's such an important decision to make. Kids should not be allowed to make that decision. The adults should make that decision. And that's the idea. They, they, they match them up according to their economic, you know, as they're, they're in the same kind of uh, economic uh, situation or, uh, you know, and, and, and all that. So, uh, but understand this, Jesus said this to us. He said, you, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should bear fruit. Ephesians 1 says this, just as he has chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. You know, he chose you. We've been matchmade. We've been a matchmaker. You know, the Holy Spirit's the mass maker for us. And you've been chosen. Are you a child of God? Are you a child of God? Do you know for sure that you're His? If you know for sure that you're His, you know what? You have been chosen from the foundations of the earth, the Bible says. From the foundations of the earth. Before you were born, He chose you. Isn't that cool? Aren't you glad that He did that? Because if He had to make that choice now, maybe He wouldn't have chose you, all right? <laughs> but He chose you before you were even born, you know? Now think about that. I've used this analogy before because I remember when I was first thinking about this, I think, well, that's pretty cool. You chose me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. How do I know that I'm chosen? Well, accept him. And then you know that you're chosen. Well, what if I don't accept him? Well, then you're not chosen. All right? So you get into all that. Uh, But here's the thing. If I knew, so he already knows how I'm going to run my race. He already knows how I'm going to finish. He knows how my life is. He's not bound by time, right? We've talked about that. And, uh, and so if I knew the future and I was going to bet on something, if I was going to bet on a horse race or a car race or I was going to uh, bet on some numbers for a lottery, would I choose the wrong one if I knew the outcome? No, I'd, I'd, I'd bet on the, the horse. I wish I, could, wish I could see the future, right? I'd, I'd bet on the right horse. I'd, I'd, I'd do the right thing. But the thing is this, is that God saw your, he saw the end from the beginning. He saw how you're going to raise, and he chose you. You know what that makes you? Makes you a winner. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for choosing us. Now, in this in this marriage, going back to the marriage thing here, the betrothal is this: it starts off with that matchmaking. When the match is made, then the bride the the, the bride price there is a dowry that's to be paid. Genesis 22, Genesis 23, 1 Samuel 18. We find that in the Bible. We find that in the, in the, in the history of this thing is that there was a price to be paid. All right, that, that dowry or that bride price was to be paid to the, the bride's father. Right? 1 Corinthians 6 says, For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. 1 Peter 1 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed, with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by the traditions of your fathers, but by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. That price has been paid, you know, and every, every piece of this, you know, and we can spend, you know, hours looking at this, diving into this, every part of this marriage that we see in, in Judaism, every part of this applies to us, that bride price, he paid the price for us. If you forget, go back to the cross. Remember, this is what it cost 
This is the price that was paid for your salvation, that bride price. But then you get to this point of the betrothal. And this is the section they're in. And as I go through this, this is the section that we're in. The betrothal. There, it is a legal, formal ceremony that they do. Right? Once this betrothal takes place, they are known as, even in the scriptures, it talks about the betrothal period in Deuteronomy and talks about what can be broken you know, in that. We'll get to that. But, but uh, it, when, in, in, even in the scriptures, it says one of the betrothed. And then a few lines later, it says, now that they're married, because they're considered married, they're legally married. They're not coming together yet. She better not be pregnant because that means she's fooling around. And if she is, by the way, and we'll, well, look at this. She can, uh, she can be killed. This, uh, that's what the text is here is going on. We are betrothed. It starts off, actually, there's five, there's five parts of this. One, that they're sealed with the cup of acceptance. All right, we'll talk about that. The bride uh, needs to stay pure during that time. Okay, if she starts fooling around and gets pregnant, you are, she's in big, big trouble. The groom, check this out. The groom is to go to prepare a house. He's to get everything ready for the marriage, for their, for their life together. There's anticipation because it can happen. The bride, that that uh, behold, the bridegroom can happen at any time. And then there's a presentation stage. This is very cool. All right. Now, I know it's kind of technical, but this is good stuff. So we are betrothed to Jesus. It starts off with this cup. As they come together and they do this formal ceremony, one of the things that happens is they have this cup that they drink. As soon as, and you, and you read this, go online, you can, you can read about ancient um, you know, uh, betrothals and all that. When they drink, when they actually drink the cup, once they drink the cup, that seals it. That's the very act that seals it as they drink the cup. Does that sound familiar for us? He took the cup after supper. He said, drink it, all of you, for this is my blood, which is the new covenant, which is shed for many in the remissions of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine uh, from now on until the day that I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. Until the actual wedding feast, I'm not drinking it again. It's exactly what was happening here in these betrothal. That when you take, whenever we take, this would be a good time to take communion, huh? We'll do that in a couple weeks. But as we take communion, it's, it's saying, I am yours. I am yours, God. I am betrothed to you. I'm waiting for that moment. Lord, come get me off this planet. These people are insane. All right. But I'm waiting for that moment. All right. So there's that cup of acceptance. And during that time, as I already said, the, the bride needs to stay pure. Christian, we need to stay in a place where we're pure before God. The apostle Paul said, I'm jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I betrothed you speaking to the church, speaking to all of us, I betrothed you to one husband that I might present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. There is a purity that's here. Lord, help me to stay on track. Help us all to do well. As you get older, Lord, help us to finish well. Help us to stay close to you, God. You know, how many have we seen that have started well but didn't finish well? Man, make sure you're doing well. Lord, help us in that. If you messed up, you're in a good place. We're here for you. You know, you can't really, you can't really mess up so far that the love of Jesus won't reach you. You know, but if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Um, I love, I love serving God. I love that when I do mess up and I do mess up occasionally, not every day, just like every other day. But when I do mess up, when I do mess up, the Holy Spirit's there, right there to help me. I can say, God, forgive me, and he's right there. The bride is to stay. We're the bride of Christ. We're to stay pure until that moment, until that day. Now, what, the, what does the groom do? So that's, what, that's what the bride's to do. What is the groom going to do? The groom is to going, and this is still today, they're going now and to prepare the house. Now, in, in, even in Israel today, you'll see houses that, are, uh, that are, 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 they've got construction going on them. Okay, some of that's taxes. As long as they've got construction going on on the house, they won't, they won't tax the whole house. And there's, there's some of that, those plans. But, but the thing is this, is that if you're, if, you know, in, so I'm in my dad's house, I'm there with my mom and dad, and I'm going to get married. When I get married, I'm just going to build on to my dad's house and, and, and increase his house, but then that'll be part of my house. 
And so I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm getting the house all ready, getting everything ready. Now, what did Jesus say? Does this, boy, this should be ringing bells in our hearts. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, you will be also. He's been preparing a place for 2,000 years. Well, as Keith Green says, it took about you know, six days or so to create the, create the, the earth that we're on. And he's been on, he's 2,000 years creating the, the heavens. We're living in a garbage can compared to what's going on up there. I like that little saying. 1,000 years. There he's building the house. He's, he's on that moment. The interesting thing about this though, if you look at this, again, just, just read about this whole ceremony that they do, is this, it's the father is the one that says, okay, son, wait a minute. Well, no, it's not quite done you got to shore up that wall. you got to do this. And it's the father that looks at the house, and, get, and the father is the one that says, okay, go get your bride. It's not, this, not, it's not the, the bridegroom. It's not, it's, not the, it's not him that makes that decision. It's the dad that makes that decision. That sound familiar in, in itself? Mark chapter 13 says, Jesus says, but of that day of the hour, nobody knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son, but the father alone. We're waiting for the father to say, go get your bride. Go get your bride. That's coming, you know. That's coming. So the father is the one that makes that decision. You guys still doing okay? Boy, if you guys don't get this, I'm messed up for the day, all right? So, and then there is this moment, this moment of anticipation in Matthew chapter 25. Go over there really fast, all right? I got to do this real fast. Matthew chapter 25, then the kingdom of heaven shall be like of ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were, were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took the lamps and took no oil with them, the Holy Spirit type of oil. The, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, waiting for the father to say, okay, go get your bride, they all slumbered. And at midnight... The anticipation. At midnight, the cry went out. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet him. Someday there'll be a trumpet blast. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And we that are alive, remain. We'll meet the Lord in the air, the Bible says. We're waiting for that trumpet blast. We're waiting for that moment. In anticipation. And there's a midnight cry in this story that Jesus is telling. Midnight cry. Behold, the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. All the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamp has gone out. The wise answered, said, No, at least we should not have enough for us, but rather to those who sell and buy, go buy your own. They went to buy. The bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the virgins, verse 11, came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And they said, Surely I say to you, I, I don't know you. And then he says this, here's the point of that story. Watch therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You don't know that moment that he's coming. That present, you don't know. It could be today. It could be this moment. We don't know. We are to live every day in anticipation. Today could be the day. Now as you get older, you know, today could be the day that all of a sudden you're a little chest pain and there you are. You know, you don't know. It's a little weird as you get older because you don't know, you know, and, and isn't it weird, some of you that are older, that all of our friends are slowly getting picked off one by one, you know? I was, I was watching yesterday, I was watching um, um, Captain Kirk. I was watching, what's his name? William, William Shatner. Shatner. I should know that. I know that. William Shatner, he's turning 92 here, I think next week or the week after. And he was talking about that. He was talking about all of his friends are gone. Everybody that he knew, you know, they're all, they're all going one by one. And he knows his time is close. He knows his time. 90, 90, 92 years old. All right, you're getting pretty close. Some of you are like right there. Some of you might be a little older than that. But, uh, but here's the thing is this, is that anticipation. Whether it's in death or in the rapture of the church and we're going home, there should be an anticipation. How then shall we live every day? What if this is your last day? Lord, let's, let a, let's live a life that honors him. Every single day, anticipation. And then the marriage supper of the Lamb from Revelation. 
Let us rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her is granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And it said to me, right, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. There's a day coming, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to be there. Look forward to that day, long for that day. We're waiting right now for that trumpet blast. I don't know. We, we, we've lost some focus in our church over that, in the churches. I remember the early days of, of being saved. Man, we, every time we got together, we talked about the return of Jesus. And there was things that was like scaring us, you know, the late great planet Earth. The whole world was looking at this as the end of the world. The late great planet Earth was a number one bestseller. It was a television documentary they had uh, going out. And then the, the guy that wrote 88 Reasons Why the Lord is Coming Back in 1988. All right, And we all bought the book. We all read it. The Lord's come back in 1988. And then he wrote, then he, then he, he got toward, just towards the end of 88, he wrote 89 reasons why the Lord's come back. We go, okay, you're, you're a charlatan. Uh, but, but we did have that anticipation like never before. Like never before. Are we still living in that anticipation? What if today was the day? Whether in death or in rapture, are we, are we ready for that day? Lord, help us. We get to this, and that's why it's going to take us 40 years to get through this text here, is as we go through this, this betrothal period, you cannot, you cannot, and I, we should spend another hour on this, but you cannot just blow past this without understanding. There's something super significant right here, not just for them, and this is Jewish weddings, and uh, according to Deuteronomy, if she is found pregnant, what he is obligated to do is having her put to death. All right, so that's, that's the background on this. But then you, you kind of pause it there and understand we are betrothed to Jesus. We are betrothed and we're waiting for that moment where the marriage supper of the Lamb, where the, behold the bridegroom and the wedding and all, the wedding feast and all that. All right, back to our text. The birth of Jesus Christ was as follows as Mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child. Joseph, being a good man, was a just man, wanted to put away, uh, make a public example of her, was mindful to put her away in secret. Deuteronomy 22 tells us that he, his, his really obligation was to put her to death if she was found pregnant during this time. Him being a good man, could you imagine what's going through his head? You know, man, I got this beautiful gal that I'm betrothed to, and she comes at me and she says she's pregnant. And she says she's pregnant by God. Okay, so she's not only she's not only pregnant, she's crazy. And who knows what who knows what happened? Who's who's the father of this child? This is crazy stuff. You, you, but him being a just man didn't want to. Didn't, okay, we could take her out and kill her. And while he thought about it, think about. Okay, we know the we know the story. We know what's going on. Think about what had to be going through his head. This would have been like this would have been complete disaster in his life. He's thinking about these things, total turmoil. An angel appeared to him. He said, "Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid. Believe her. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for which is conceived her and her is is of the Holy Spirit. She'll bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, Jesus." For, this is the name of Jesus, he shall save his people from their sins. God is salvation. Now all this was done. That might be fulfilled. Again, here Matthew, okay, this, this all happened to be fulfilled with the scripture says out of Isaiah 7, 14. And so here Joseph, this, this turmoil that he's going through, and, he's, and, and the angel says, look, believe her, she's okay. Believe her. This is what she's saying is true. You need to believe her and you need to fulfill your marriage with her. And this, this is, and then Matthew says, this is exactly what the scripture says was going to happen. A virgin is going to conceive and is going to have a child. Out of, again, uh, Isaiah 7. And Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. 
It did not know her. Circle this, highlight this. Till she was brought forth her firstborn. And she called his name Jesus. Until. All right, for, for our Catholic friends that, uh, that they had stayed a virgin and all that, and even some would say that Joseph stayed a virgin, and Mary was a virgin, all this. Um, all this. The, the, the scripturally, uh, Jesus had at least six brothers. We even know the names of some. He had at least two sisters. It talks about his sisters, plural. So he had at least two sisters. Okay, we, we know a couple of Jesus' brothers, half-brothers, right? Okay, who, who, are, who are his two brothers? You have James, right? In the, the book of James and, hey, Jude, do, 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 do. So Jude, okay, that, that song was written for Jude in our Bible, right? And so, so James and Jude, you have those two. And so I know there, there was those that would say, well, you know, she stayed a virgin, these words are that. No, it's pretty clear, and I don't want to, you know, be a big problem here. Just understand they had natural relationship, they had children and all that. Would have been a trip being the brother of Jesus, though, huh? Man, I'm, my brother is, man, I, yeah, I'd have been really messed up. I can think of all the wrong things I would have done. But the brothers did not believe in him until after the resurrection, Okay, they didn't believe in him. In fact, they kind of mocked him. The one time we really see the brothers coming forward is that they're getting ready to go down to go to uh, go up to Jerusalem to one of the feasts, and they're they're saying, "Hey, nobody that wants to make himself known stays here. Go with us to the feast where everybody's at, and, sh- and show who you are." And he says, "No, nope, my time's not now. No, nope, no." Nope. And so they went on. The brothers went on, and then Jesus went on after and did go to Jerusalem at that point. One of our stories here, and so super interesting. And yet, to me, this whole passage here, and I'm going to quit with this, is, is this, is that, that as, as they're betrothed in this whole thing, we are betrothed to Christ. You are a child of God. You are the bride of Christ. Lord, help us to live like that. You know, Lord, help us to live a life that honors you. Someday, we're going to hear that trumpet blast. It could be today. Now, you've heard me say this a lot because it shocked me. It was one of those things you've heard me. I, you've all heard my stories. Uh, this service has. But, uh, but, you know, it was about Billy Graham. Anybody remember the Billy Graham thing I told you about that, where he counted down to, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7. And I was scared to death thinking, man, that's Billy Graham. Lord's coming back, you know. What if, what if I'm glad he didn't, though, by the way, at that point, because this, this, that, was, uh, that was, oh, 34, probably probably almost 40 years ago. Wow. How old we got? Say it was 35 years ago that took place. And I think it was a little longer than that. 35. How many, how many has been saved? You've been saved less than 35 years. Raise your hand. All right. You guys would be in trouble. All right. Boy, this is an old group. How come you didn't raise your hand? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so, but here we are. So I pray this, you hear me pray this sometimes. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. But Lord, give us one more day. There's still so many that don't know. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There's still a lot to do. Do you have family members that don't know him? Do you have family members that you love, that you care about? Do you have neighbors and and people around you that don't know him? I want them to know him. You know, the Bible's really clear. You can't get around these issues. The Bible's really clear that there's a day go- coming that we're going to, we're the bride of Christ. We're going home. Later on in the book of Revelation, they, uh, John is called by the angels, say, come over here. I want to show you the bride. I want to show you where they're at. And he shows them the new heavens and the new earth and, and all of that. And that's where they've been right there. That's where they're at during that seven years. That's where they've been, right? But, but those that don't know him, there is some pretty deep concerning verses in our Bibles for those that don't know him. Here's the thing is this, is that make sure you know him. That's start right there. Make sure you are the pride of, pride of Christ. Make sure you are his. Make sure that matchmaking was for you. Make sure you are a child of God. I do know this though. We're all going home one day. We're all getting older. And it, whether it's in the rapture or something else, it, you know, in that moment, just like that little 
phone going off right there. Bam. It's going to happen. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a moment, you know. And so, Lord, help us to be ready for that day. Help us, Lord, to long for that day. Lord, that, and as we're here, Lord, as we're waiting for that day, for, that, for your soon return, Lord, I do pray, Lord, that we'd be a people, Lord, that would love you, to follow you, and that would love each other, Lord. Lord, you told us that's what you wanted us to do. You wanted us to occupy until you come. You told us to go make disciples. You told us to love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. You told us to love one another. Lord, you made it simple. You didn't give us hard instructions. You just said, follow you. So Lord, help us to do that. Help us to follow you, Lord, in this day, in the rest of the days that we have, longing for that day, Lord. And thank you for this story as we're going through your word. But Lord, thank you for the story of us. You saved us. You gave us hope. And I pray, Lord, that everyone in this room knows you. Everyone in this room is waiting in that betrothed state, waiting for the, with anticipation of your coming. If you're not sure where you're at with, with God, right now between you and God, it starts right here. The matchmaking happens right here in this room, right now. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. You pray this right now between you and God. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, you're so faithful to us. We love you passionately. We long for home, but until that day, Lord, help us to be found faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand together.